I just trust you to just do it. Just make it happen. <laughs> The stories we collected from that experience were so powerful that it kind of snowballed into something way bigger than we thought it would be. The self-exploration project would integrate the arts and the sciences and the humanities in a powerful way you know, to both educate the public about cervical cancer, acknowledge the complexity and diversity of experiences with the cervix, and to really just open a dialogue. The exhibit really took me on a crazy um, journey of empowerment for myself just because there was so much self-doubt um, because I am not an art major and I was just tasked to figure it out and it was really um, a little hard. The other curators were the momentum behind the project because when they came in I was so exhausted from a year of working on it and just trying to make it happen. Um, that I think I was a little burnt out. Diane Lee and Adair Jones really stepped in and they have such different backgrounds. Last week we got together and then we were looking at the ex exhibition space. That was like pictures could go here. These paintings could go here. And like we were actually like building blocks in our heads. Before we knew it, it was like, like five hours had passed and we'd just been brainstorming, brainstorming. I've been introduced to concepts and then I've had enough time to be disillusioned by them, right? And so some of her plans for like the cervix garden and the entrance and like this, this hallway that was lined with fabric, all of those go against the traditional white cube gallery aesthetic. And I was totally for all those ideas. <laughs> when she showed me these things, I said, okay, like how does the cervix garden work? What are the materials? What are the measurements? Basically just asking more and more into it. Not bad. Yeah. Compare it. We're making an environment for the visitor to participate in. This does look really regal. All right. The skills that go into curation are not installation. I was just kind of like involved in all. These are 30 by 40. No, 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 we'll, we'll stitch it. We'll just... Trying to think if it's better to get the thinner or thicker. Uh, the bright one over there now. Mm -hmm. The art would be finalized by the person installing it. For me, when I go forward and create things, I will think about what is it going to be like for the person um, installing this. I told that might work. Can this be transported easily? Like, do I need to build? some sort of device to like keep it sturdy because it's fragile. Those are valid things in the life of the object in which you've created that I think sometimes can be forgotten because you're so focused on the process of creation, you're not thinking about the way the object will interact with the world after the final brushstroke. Because all this is white. Wait, is that how yeah. we line it up? No, Even though we all had difficulties navigating each other's opinions at times, I think at the end of the day, no matter how much we might have disagreed over where things should be, I think that brought us together. Oh my goodness. Olivia, I felt like I had to take off my shoes walking in here. This is sacred ground. I love this kind of energy. It's like a performance coming together. Yeah. That's what I'm used to. This is yeah, it's an iteration. We had everything hung and then we all came together and decided to change it all. So. You would open the door and walk through the vulva. It allowed the visitor to come into like a different mindset and to focus. This so transforms the space to have these fabric corridors. And when you walk in, they billow too. That already is creating the sense of, you know, fluidity and motion and how our bodies are always um, systems in process and in progress. They are not static. I remember the scientist 
who came through with his son and his wife, and he felt like, <gasps> and said, I used to build nuclear reactors, and you had to vacuum your shoes, put on booties, put on a full paper suit, and that's what that entrance made me feel like. Like I needed to do that because I didn't want to soil this space. He was so drawn in by Jenny's huge paintings on the outside door and was just like, <gasps> and then his wife had opened the door for him and then here's this opening, <laughs> the vaginal corridor opening into this inner hidden world. And he stepped through and he's a statuesque man, like six something feet, six and a half feet tall almost. Like he was just, and he was like. I had to engage my whole body, round my shoulders, duck my head, lift my feet and stepped in. And he just turned with his eyes wide and said, I felt like I was being born in reverse. <laughs> to hear this man, I imagine in his 50s, was very powerful. And then above you was this painting that hung down from the ceiling with abstracted cervix, but also with a background that looked very celestial, like, like dark colors and um, kind of stars. I think that arrangement normally seen in kind of religious settings, like you're looking up at a saint at an altar or something like that. And it suggests reverence, so metaphorical, but then also literal in that there is the vulva vaginal canal cervix. A lot of these pieces, you can come to a greater understanding of them if you know a little bit about the artist. Not to walk in and think everything's gonna hit you in the face, like, but to seek out meaning in each piece and to maybe too if you see a piece at first and think don't like immediately have some sort of connection with it to consider to stand there and then consider why do I not have a connection with it and ask yourselves questions uh, to the immediate reactions that you have. I, it was really quite astounding whenever you walk into the exhibit opening night everyone was so it was so loud in there. This was really driven by students. There's something really poetic about thinking about our own bodies in this way. I, I love that we're breaking down a lot of those barriers about talking about it. The exhibit was meant to shock people and then reset their intentions. Instead of projecting their own thoughts and feelings always on paintings, allowing artists to tell their personal stories in a way that really elucidated you know, help with the cervix from many different angles. Even if the exposure to something um, like cervical cancer is in an acute moment, it's reflective of all of the surrounding issues of what is the access to healthcare that this person has had before? What is the access to negotiating um, protection in sexual encounters that this person has? You know, what is their um, economic background, their cultural background, um, the color of their skin, the expression of their gender, and how that changes um, the ability they have to speak up for themselves and be respected. The Kala exhibit also is evocative of this, as this participant said, reverse birth. <laughs> You're being welcomed into that womb, and no matter what's happening in that womb, if it's shedding of the uterine, uterine lining, or if it's um, pregnancy, if it's pregnancy that results in miscarriage, if it's pregnancy that results in stillbirth, if it's pregnancy that results in healthy birth, um, it's a, it's a process and it's this thing that makes us take our time. And I think that's actually pretty countercultural in our world right now is to take your time. And I love the experience of the Kala exhibit and giving us that permission. Even that there are different cultures represented yeah. here, right? That we can talk about the history of gynecology, or that that artist there is from Korea, or that this here represents sterilization in Puerto Rico. It's focusing on some key pieces, but simultaneously understand that this is a part of a continuous story.